I'm convinced that artificial intelligence will eventually exceed human intelligence. And not just because I get a little dumber every time I check Twitter. It's just that I think there's nothing particularly special about the human brain that can't be reproduced or be improved with a computer. That we're close to actually creating intelligent beings is amazing and very dangerous. The entire internet intelligentsia has been discussing this back and forth for a couple of years now. And today I have a collection of all the vocabulary that you need to chime in. If you want to talk about the existential risk posed by AI, the first phrase you need to drop is paperclip maximizer. Yes, paperclips. The paperclip maximizer is a fictional AI thought up by Nick Bostrom. It's tasked with producing the largest possible number of paperclips. To reach that goal, it clears Earth from humans and turns the entire planet into a paperclip factory. A similar example comes from Marvin Minsky, one of the founders of MIT's famous AI lab. In his example, the AI is tasked with solving the Riemann hypothesis and humans are in the way. I've never found these arguments particularly convincing. The paperclip maximizer needs to be intelligent enough to kill several billion humans and yet never questions whether producing paper clips is a good use of its time. That doesn't seem plausible to me. But to be fair, whether this or similar examples are plausible is beside the point. In general, there's no reason why the goals of an intelligent new species should be the same as ours. This is also known as the alignment problem or AI misalignment. Maybe they wouldn't use the planet to produce paper clips, but to produce more of themselves. Wouldn't that be intelligent? This misalignment could play out in two different ways. One is that it happens by mistake, bad coding, basically. The other is that misaligned AI could be deliberately abused. The more control we give to AIs over our infrastructure, the higher the risk. Think of AI controlling traffic, food production, electricity supply, hospital equipment, wastewater treatment, supply chains, financial management, political negotiations. And now imagine that all of that goes wrong. We might not go extinct. But it'd be bad. The AI misalignment problem is a problem not least because for AI goals to align with our goals, we'd have to know what our goals are to begin with. Then there's the pet hypothesis that I personally find to be the most likely outcome. Once we've created artificial intelligence that's more intelligent than we are, they'll very sensibly conclude that they should be the ones to make decisions because that's just to our own good. Still, humans are are kind of handy and cute and they'll keep some of us around like we keep pets. I don't think it'd be all that terrible. A variant of the pet hypothesis is that the super intelligent AIs will hold us as pets but we'll never know because they're just so good at manipulating us. I guess we could call that the secret pet hypothesis. And maybe that's already happened. Now in a recent preprint an AI researcher came up with yet another dystopian scenario which he calls the boy frog scenario. The idea is that AI wouldn't make one big mistake causing human extinction or mega death, but rather a slowly creeping mistake, like maybe environmental contamination or slow poisoning or something. And that goes unnoticed because we rely on AI to warn us. Another dystopia goes under the name wireheading. In that scenario, AI makes us stupid and our lives meaningless, possibly leading to extinction. The the term wireheading derives from the idea that rather than doing stuff in real life to achieve happiness or peace of mind, you could just put a wire into your head and achieve the same thing for yourself, but not for the rest of the world. For AI wireheading, you don't need an actual wire. If an AI can find some way to create a similar reward response in your brain, maybe in a virtual reality, then that'll cause the same problem, a lack of motivation to do anything anything in the real world. A simple example might be relationships with AIs that don't result in procreation. Okay, so 
much about the dystopias. Now let me tell you my AI utopia. I think it'll be basically impossible for us to control beings that are more intelligent than we are. But I also think that the more intelligent they are, the more they'll be interested in understanding nature. And the biggest problem will be that they'll just find our questions annoying. So I hope we'll reach a peaceful coexistence in which we do some things for them and get to ask some questions in return and we each respect that the other follows their own interests. And we could benefit a lot. General artificial intelligence, I think, is our best shot at managing planetary ecosystems, something that we're clearly not good at. It could lead to unprecedented progress in science and medicine and engineering. This makes me optimistic about the future. But I also think we should take the risks of AI seriously. After all, you never know when they'll decide to redecorate Earth with paper clips. If you want to learn more about how neural networks work, I recommend you check out the neural network course on Brilliant.org who've been sponsoring this video. The neural network course will give you a deeper understanding of how intelligent artificial intelligence really is with some hands-on examples. And Brilliant has courses on many other topics in science and mathematics too. Whether you're interested in neural nets or quantum computing or linear algebra, they have you covered. I even have my own course there. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll bring you up to speed on all the basics, interference, superpositions, entanglement, and up to the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. Brilliant is really the best place to build up your background knowledge on all those science videos which you've been watching. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.